Texture packs for Element 3D are so expensive. But here's a fun idea. You can make your own. You just need access to a good flat photo of a texture, Photoshop, and obviously, Element 3D. Let's dive in. A texture is made up of several layers of information. A color layer, which indicates what the color or image of the texture is. A bump layer, which indicates the indents and bumps of the texture. An ambient occlusion layer, which helps make the shadows look more realistic. And a gloss layer. You can also add other layers, like reflectivity or illumination. When you combine these layers of information, you get a texture. So here is a photo I took with my DSLR of some snow. The easiest way to make a seamless texture is to simply replicate and flip it four times. Here we go. I'm going to shrink my image because it's very high res and I don't want my computer to lag. Alternatively, you could just increase the canvas size with a crop tool for a low res image. Now, I duplicate my image and flip it horizontally. Holding shift, I drag it to the right of the original image. Merge the layers and duplicate again. This time, flip vertically and holding shift, drag down. Resize your image to fit inside the frame. You can merge the layers before or after the shrink. Crop the image. You now have a seamless texture. But now we need to make it less obvious that we use the flipping trick. Using the patch tool, randomize the texture, especially along the midlines. I also decided to brighten this image up. And once you're done, save the image as a JPEG. Keep it in one folder specifically for that texture. Label it whatever you'll name the texture, then color. This is the color info layer of your texture. We'll make the bump layer next. Duplicate your layer and go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. Play around with settings like Invert Height, which by the way you can do in Element 3D later, and especially contrast details. Save the file as a JPEG again, as the name of the texture, then Bump. Let's make the ambient occlusion layer next. I find that the easiest way to do this is to make the bump layer multiply over the original image, merge layers, adjust levels, Control L is the shortcut, to maximize brightness and only leave the darkest shadows. Then desaturate by clicking Control U. Save the image again as a JPEG, with the name of the texture, then AO. Now, let's get to the gloss layer. Do alt Control z a bunch of times until you get the color image. Use levels to brighten it up and increase contrast and then desaturate it. The black parts of the image will be rough and the white bits will be glossy. Obviously, depending on your texture, you might want to do something different. I'm going to go ahead and save this though. Again, I'm saving it as JPEG and naming it the name of my texture, then gloss. Now, let's open up After Effects and go into Element 3D. First off, create a cube. Under Scene Materials, click on the default texture. Under Textures, you can now add in your texture information layers. Click on Diffuse and import your color layer. I apologize, my computer is getting laggy because I'm also recording the screen. Add the bump layer next then Ambient Occlusion, then Glossiness. Note that for each of these layers, you can do some manipulations in Element 3D. Let's take a look at what we have. Okay, just for kicks, I'll add a Reflectivity layer. I find I can often get away with just using the Gloss layer. To turn on Reflectivity, you have to go down here and turn it up from 0%. Otherwise, nothing will change. And... That looks good! Okay, the last step is to save the new material as a material preset. And there you have it! Okay, let me show you one last trick. Which one is it? Uh, no, this one. Right, so notice that it's transparent and we can see the back face. The way this is accomplished is with PNG layers instead of JPEGs. This is because you can save PNGs with transparent portions. 
while JPEGs flatten everything and turn transparent portions white. So, once you've loaded in your layers, you need to scroll down to the advanced panel, increase your alpha threshold, and turn on Draw Back Faces. And you're done! Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. To get you started, I have included some free texture layers I've made so far for my own library. Please feel free to use them for commercial or non-commercial purposes, but do not sell them as they are to anyone under your own name. Thanks for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe.